So this is a home built heat treating oven that I made. I give credit for this design to Dan Como from DIY Knife Maker Central. He has a really good website on the internet that he's put together that has all kinds of builds on it. So I basically used his design to, um, to build this heat treat oven. So this particular oven, I've made it for 240 volt. It's 3000 watt. The interior dimensions are 14 and a half by seven and a half by six. So that gives a cubic footage of about 0.38 cubic feet. It's about 8,000 watts per cubic foot, which is actually quite a bit. I made everything, uh, everything for it, I guess. I ordered the insulating fire bricks from the Pottery Supply House in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I got the Kenthal wire from them as well. I wired it myself. So you can see right now, I turned it on about a minute ago. It's already at 900 degrees, climbing fairly quickly. What I've done is I've got a screwed on handle here that screws right on, directly onto the controller pad there. That locks the door shut, keeps it nice and tight. Down here is a limit switch. It's just basically a bolt with a screw behind it so it's flexible. That was a bit of a mistake that I had made earlier on was not having that screw in there. As the oven heated up, it would expand and it would lose contact with the limit switch. The thermal couple came with the PID. The PID is an Inkbird PID. Came off of uh, Amazon.com. It was about 50 bucks for the PID, the solid state relay and the thermal couple. Now this thermal couple is a different one than the one that came with the unit. The one that came was only rated to 400 degrees. This one's rated to 2500 degrees. I've had no problems getting this oven up to 2000 degrees. It takes probably about 10 minutes or so to get to 2000 degrees. So you can see here we just crossed 1000 degrees and it's only been about a minute and a half heating up. Got two fuses there because this is 240. There's basically two lines going in, so I got a fuse for each line. The lower yellow light is the power on. The red light is basically telling you when the burners are turning on. That'll flip on in a second, I'm sure. There it goes, so it just turned the burners on. It's important to have that limit switch on there because when you open up the door, you don't want to leave power going through the coils because of the potential difference between different parts of the coils. It could arc and short out your coils if you manage to contact it, especially if you're doing a knife wrapped in foil. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward to build. It's just sheet metal casing, angle iron, hinges. I'll open it up here in a second. Even when it gets to 2000 degrees, it gets hot on top. I can't quite leave my hand on here, but I can put my hand on the top of it, so it's not too bad. The interior dimensions, I can put basically up to a 16 inch blade if I put it in diagonally without an issue. So other than that, I'll just open it up, let you have a look inside. It's only at 1100 degrees right now, so it's not too, too hot yet, but. So that's the inside, that's just a piece of angle iron I've got sitting in there. You can see here the blocks, I kind of routered everything to fit together, the fire bricks. I did the same on the door as well, I don't know if that's really necessary, I just wanted to try and retain as much heat in there. This is a single element, I didn't run multiple elements in, or in parallel or series. So that element, it's about 57 feet of wire that I had to use for that to get the wattage that I was aiming for. There is a second solid state relay. Um, and that's basically required to make sure that you don't get power going through the coils. So anyways, I'm posting this for somebody who asked a question on blade form about how I put this together. I put together a thread on there. And this is just so that somebody can have a look at this oven. If they like it, I'm more than willing to answer any questions.